Welcome to Electron Line. Continuing with all the hyperbolic functions, and in this case all the inverse hyperbolic functions, now we're going to find the inverse hyperbolic cosecant. And so we start out by calling y equal to the inverse hyperbolic cosecant of x, and therefore we can then say that x equals the, cose the hyperbolic cosecant of y, which by definition is 1 over the hyperbolic sine of y, and then we can write that in terms of the exponentials. And so then we can say that x is equal to 2 divided by e to the y minus e to the minus y. And then we need to solve that for y because once we have it solved for y in terms of x, we now will have an expression for the inverse hyperbolic cosecant of x. So let's go ahead and cross multiply. So this becomes equal to x times e to the y minus x times e to the minus y equals the numerator here, which is 2. And then... We, you probably are going to see the pattern here. We're going to multiply both sides of the equation by e to the y. And when we do that, the left side becomes x e to the 2y minus x. Now, e to the y times e to the minus y is simply equal to 1. And then on the right side, we have 2 e to the y. Now we're going to write everything over on one side of the equation set it equal to 0, and then you realize we end up with a quadratic equation of e to the y. So on the left side, we have x e to the 2y. Moving this across, that would be minus 2 e to the y minus x equals 0. And now to solve for e to the y, we can use the quadratic formula. We can then say that e to the y is equal to the coefficient of the middle term, the negative of that, which is a positive 2, plus or minus the square root of negative 2 squared minus 4 times a, which is a coefficient here, which is x, times c, which is a minus x. And the whole thing divided by 2 times x right here, 2 times the coefficient of the first term. So now we need to simplify that. So when we do that, we get e to the y is equal to 2 plus or minus the square root of that would be 4 minus times a minus becomes a plus 4x squared, the whole thing divided by 2x. And then we realize we can factor out a 4 here. The square root of 4 is 2. So then this can now be written as e to the y is equal to 2 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 1 plus x squared all divided by 2. So go ahead and see, we factor out a 4, that becomes 2, of course, the square root of 4 is 2. Now we can simplify by dividing the denominator into the numerator. So e to the y is equal to 1 plus or minus, let's see here, am I missing something? I think I forgot my x, I need to also put an x there. There we go. So plus or minus the square root of 1 plus x squared divided by x, because we got rid of the 2. Now, we have a plus and a minus there, but notice the quantity 1 plus x squared is always going to be larger than 1, and if we then subtract it from 1, we get, end up with a negative number. And the negative number, well, e to the y can never be a negative number, so therefore the negative is not a part of the solution, so we're going to get rid of the negative. So um, negative is not possible. And so therefore, this ends up being our solution. Now we need to take the natural log of both sides. So the natural log of e to the y equals the natural log of 1 plus the square root of 1 plus x squared divided by x. And so we can say that y, therefore, is equal to the natural log of, and probably want to write it like this, 1 over x times 1 plus the square root of 1 plus x squared. I like this format better. And the reason why I like it better is because we can then separate this expression, which is a familiar one, and then have 1 over x on the outside factored out. Now, the purpose was, of course, to find the inverse hyperbolic cosecant of x. And then since y was set equal to that, we could then draw the conclusion that the inverse hyperbolic cosecant of x is indeed equal to the natural log of 1 over x times 1 plus the square root of 1, oops, that should be a 1, there you go, 1 plus x squared 
like that. So we finally found the, the inverse hyperbolic cosecant of x. Now it turns out sometimes we can also write it as follows. We can say that the inverse hyperbolic cosecant of x is also equal to the inverse, not the tangent, that's the wrong function, the inverse hyperbolic sine of 1 over x. So sometimes they will write the inverse hyperbolic cosecant of x as the inverse hyperbolic sine of 1 over x. And that's why I've written this quantity right here. We have gotten back the inverse hyperbolic sine of x being equal to the natural log of x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. And now we're going to replace every x by 1 over x. So then we get, instead of this, we get this, where every x replaced by 1 over x. Now we're going to work this out and show that this is the same as what we got over there. And therefore, we can legitimately claim that, yes, indeed, the inverse hyperbolic cosecant of x is indeed equal to inverse hyperbolic sine of 1 over x. So let's go ahead and see what we get here. So this becomes equal to the natural log of 1 over x plus, now here we're going to work this out. So this becomes 1 over x squared plus 1, like this. And then we're going to write this over a common denominator. This is equal to the natural log of 1 over x plus the square root of 1 plus x squared over x squared. Now we can factor out an x squared out of the radical. So this becomes equal to the natural log of 1 over x plus 1 over x, because the square root of x squared is x, times the square root of 1 plus x squared. And finally, we can factor out 1 over x and write it as the natural log of 1 over x times 1 plus the square root of 1 plus x squared. And now you can see, oops, that should be a bracket here. And now you can see that this is indeed the very same thing that we got over here. And therefore, we can say that, yes, indeed, the inverse hyperbolic cosecant of x is indeed equal to the inverse hyperbolic sine of 1 over x just like what we wrote over there, and that's how it's done.